Greetings and welcome to Give Us Lectures. So today we are going to be looking at the snail's construction. You may be wondering already who the scientist on your screen may be. Actually, he is called Willebrot Snell van Royen. Willebrot Snell van Royen was a Dutch mathematician and astronomer who discovered the law of refraction, also known as the snail's law, which relates the degree of the bending of light to the properties of the refractive material. Snell's law is mathematically written as n1 sin theta1 equals n2 sin theta2 or sin theta1 on sin theta2 is equal to n2 on n1. If you cross multiply this expression, you obtain the expression above where n1 and n2 are the refractive indices of the different mediums in which light travels and theta1 and theta2 are the angles of incidence and refraction respectively. You can therefore see clearly that Snell's law is one which describes the relationship between the angles of incidence and refraction as light travels from one medium to another but of different refractive indices. To demonstrate Snell's law, we will use a geometrical construction of the reflected and the refracted rays. For an incident ray in a medium of index N1 striking at I, an interface separating this medium to a medium of index N2. In that construction, the incidence point I is considered as the center of two circles C1 and C2 of respective radar R1 equals N1 and R2 equals N2. The incident ray is continued so as to intersect the circle C1 at the point J. The perpendicular to the diopter passing through J cut C2 at A in a medium of index N2 and C1 at B in a medium of index N1. The refracted ray corresponds to the ray IA and the reflected ray to the ray IB. Assuming that N1 is less than N2, let us use that construction to find the Snell's law or to demonstrate the Snell's law. And number two says, if N1 is greater than N2, use geometrical construction to prove the existence of a total reflection. Actually, I'm going to do the very first exercise and you will challenge yourself to doing the second exercise. And you can always comment in the comment section if you face difficulties with this. Now, for you to be able to realize the Snell's construction, you are going to draw two circles as such. The inner circle is called C1, while the outer circle is called C2. This line is known as the normal, while this other line is known as the diopter. The point I is the point where the normal and the delta intersect. This is the radius of the circle C1 and it is assumed to be equal to N1 while this is the radius of the circle C2 and is assumed to be equal to N2. So we have R1 equals N1 and R2 equals N2. So you draw your incident ray directing it towards the point I and you continue drawing the ray so that it touches the circle C1 at the point J. You now draw a perpendicular line to the diopter, making sure it passes through J. Now you obtain a refracted ray which moves from the point I and touches the circle C2 at the point A. You also obtain a reflected ray which moves from the point I and touches the circle C1 at the point B. Let us call this other point P, that is the point where the diopter and the dotted line meet. This angle is the angle of incidence I which corresponds to this angle and this angle is the angle of refraction R which corresponds 
to this angle while this other angle is the angle of reflection so when you are done allocating your angles then you are done with the construction for Snell's law now from our construction we are going to use trigonometric ratios in order to derive Snell's law so the very first thing to remember is that your R1 was equal to N1 and R2 is equal to N2 so from Sokatoa and from triangle IJP observe triangle IJP so this is triangle IJ P right so from that triangle IJP you discover that sin i is equal to the opposite IP on the hypotenuse IG and from triangle IAP so this is your triangle IAP here I A P you observe that sin r is equal to the opposite ip on the hypotenuse ie when you divide sin i being equal to ip on ij by sin r being equal to ip on ie you obtain sin i on sin r being equal to ia on ig remember that your ij is equal to r1 which is equal to n1 and ia is equal to r2 which is equal to n2 and you therefore obtain snell's law when you replace ia by n2 and ij by n1 thanks for watching give forth lectures and please do not leave without subscribing